What is up, brothers and sisters? It's Jay Campbell, and you're listening to the Jay Campbell Podcast. Join me for regular deep dives with amazing beings whose work is manifesting a golden age. And remember, you create your reality by your focused thoughts, conscious words, and intentional actions. Raise your vibration to optimize your love creation. Hey guys, what's up? It's Jay Campbell and I'm making a quick commercial here for seercustom.com, my revolutionary cosmeceutical peptides company, co-founded with my business partner, Nick Andrews, who happens to be one of the world's top formulators. We have the revolutionary Oxano Grow, which completely regrew my hair. If you guys saw my hair about a year ago, I was almost bald. I even had the micropigmentation program from uh, Advantis. And now I've completely regrown my hair. That's just with version one. Version two is now in the marketplace or will be very, very soon. And it is three to five times as more effective than the current version or the original beta version of Oxano. We also have Royal Blue Serum and Sky Blue Cream, which will completely upgrade your face. I mean, I'm almost 50 years old. I have a pretty good complexion. I use it regularly. My wife swears by it. It will reduce fine lines and wrinkles, dramatically improve elasticity, and just the overall look and feel of your face. You feel great on both of them. You can also use them with red light therapy. There's all sorts of great stuff. So go to a seercustom.com. And if you're a first time customer, use the coupon J15 to take 15% off your purchase. I appreciate all you guys. And I send you tremendous love and light. Hey guys, what is going on? It's Jay Campbell, of course, the founder of the Jay Campbell podcast. And I'm very excited today to be joined in my virtual Zoom studio by an amazing woman, energetic healer. Her name is, hopefully I did not butcher, butcher your last name. It's Jennifer Passivant. Is that correct? Very good. Yeah, that's great. Wow. I actually pronounced it right. I'm, I'm, I'm on a roll today. It's an amazing day. Well, Jennifer is an intuitive spiritual life coach, an energy healing practitioner, and a channeler. Now, I met uh, Jen through the internet, the interweb, actually through Twitter. And I reached out to her and I said, hey, I love your vibe. I'd love you to come on the podcast. And she graciously said yes. So again, humbly privileged and honored to have you here today. Her and I have had an amazingly lively conversation off the air. So I know this podcast is going to be amazing. But as I always do on the Jay Campbell podcast, before we get into the meat and potatoes, how did you come to find yourself on the Jay Campbell podcast? Well, uh, you reached out to me. Yeah. I mean, let's be like, real. Come on, Imagine dude. <laughs> <laughs> I was expecting to be like, well, you know, I watched you on Twitter. No, I'm just kidding. It's totally well, I mean, that's true. I do follow you. I've, I've seen your podcast and I follow you on Twitter because I've seen your podcast, but I never saw myself here. So when you reached out, that's why I was like, holy sh- yes. <laughs> well, that's awesome. Well, I mean, as I told you off air, um, it's my feeling, uh, really, it's really an internal knowing that the children of the light, which is what I call people like you, you know, resonant frequency beings are all connecting right now at this time in this, you know, this era. And as I've said, and I've had other very smart, spiritually advanced humans say, um, we all incarnated to be right here, right now. Yeah. We wouldn't it's miss literally that simple. <laughs> You know, you can, you can deny that obviously people like you and I won't, but many people will. And it's like, when you get to the level of inner work and the stuff that you and I do, you know, energy healing stuff you do, you know, you, you, you understand that as a soul, we've chosen to be here. It's literally that simple. We chose our parents. We chose our life. We chose everything as a choice as a soul. And, you know, I say this on the podcast all the time. And again, you know, I don't really have a lot of people that disagree with this anymore. They've already opted out. So I'm happy to say this now, but like we choose our parents, we choose everything. There is nothing that isn't a choice as a spirit being. And as you know, Jen, that's all we are. We're not Jennifer passive at Jay Campbell in these physical avatar bodies. We are spiritual beings having a physical experience. And like, once you get to that, that awareness, your life is just so much better because you realize you're not constrained by this physical body death factor that so many people are caught up in. Right. I mean, what are your thoughts on that? Oh, absolutely. And I, and I think too, one of the things that I want to touch on when you were talking about, you know, we choose everything. And so people, it confuses people because they think, well, but I thought I had free will. So here's the 
kind of mind bender thing is that before you incarnate and you're choosing all the different things, you choose all of the different options. So whether you choose A or B, you you predetermined yep. having A and B as a choice. Exactly. And so it's like all of the factors have already been predetermined. It's just which of those factors you choose. So that's where when people think, well, but I have free will. Yes, and you chose the, that right. chose it. It's, it's kind of a weird kind of quantum physics-y, mind bendy bit, but yeah. But I, I think, um, you know, when you were talking about, you know, uh, we're, we're spiritual beings in a physical avatar and how freeing it is, it's absolutely true. And I think not only does it help to know that um, you're in control, it helps to know that w when you transition to non-physical, you're still not done, you, you, you know, and then you're multidimensional. So you're, you as your spirit form, you're your higher self, you're all your other uh, divine aspects, you're all of your other lifetimes all at once, kind of going through this, you know, this grand experiment of having a dualistic experience, as well as the ascension experience, the human experience and the non-human, you know, spiritual, it's just, it's so, it's so freeing. And then, and then you get to learn how to dive deep into your shadow and not be afraid of facing those, those traumas and those pains and, and understanding that a part of being a, someone who's spiritual is not pretending that ha everything has to be fluffy bunnies and joy and peace and <laughs> oh, I'm, all, I'm always feeling amazing and I'm always happy and I'm, everything's always going great. Then what you're saying is, is you're not allowing yourself to have the human experience, right? right? right. You've got to have the ups and downs, the highs, the lows, the ebbs, the flows. And by pretending like you don't have the lows, the, the ebbs, the downs, you're denying your humanity. Yeah. That's not a part of the human experience. It doesn't make you less spiritual because you're having a shitty experience. Yeah. It makes you human, right. which is what you chose to incarnate to be. So own it, run with it, yeah. dive down deep into it. Just be, be a, uh, an observer of it as opposed to getting lost in the illusion of the experience. I think that's where people have most of their trouble is they get, they get lost in the belief that, that, it's real and there's no way out. Does that make sense when I say that? Totally beautiful. It's great when Jay Campbell is listening to someone who really knows their stuff and just kind of becomes silent. <laughs> no, I, mean, I, mean, I mean, but no, but stillness is the way. And, you know, I'm very highly energetic as are you, but, you know, and, you know, kind of a little bit, as my wife will call it, um, you know, uh, expressive, sometimes flamboyant. And, when I'm with the right person, you know, cause everything is energy and frequency, you know, I, you know, and you just kind of, I've been listening to you, what you said, you said some really, really powerful stuff. I just kind of was like listening. So truthfully, like your bullet points, I always love when people write really good bullet points and your bullet points are like a six hour, six part podcast. <laughs> so I have to kind of like just, you know, discern what I really want to speak with you. Cause you obviously are very high level um, consciously and I could go a lot of different ways with you. So your first two bullet points, I want to make them into one and, and I'll just read them out so the audience can follow along, but you, they're beautiful. Not buying into divisive behavior, which is duality, right? In the, in the physical realm and then how to remain calm in times of turmoil. Now, let me just throw this out there and you know, you and I are free thinkers and free talkers, no filter. Uh, you live in Michigan with a demonic governor, just as I live in California with an even probably equally demonic governor. And, you know, they have restricted the public citizenry of both of our states from going anywhere without wearing a mask, right? Like you got to mask up, right? Like wherever you go. So like your points are really important, critically for people who are in abject fear, not like you and I, but who are in fear, right? Like if I don't wear the mask, I'm going to die of COVID. COVID is a very, very bad disease and I might die from it, right? So it's like, they're so brainwashed. Yeah, yeah, they're so brainwashed. Mm -hmm. So to your point, like, how do you tell someone to not buy in and how to become unattached when there's so much fear mongering going on? Mm -hmm. So one thing I've learned is it does no good to try to proselytize. 
uh, for anything. I mean, that's true yeah. for anything. So I don't tell anybody what to think, do, believe. That's awesome. So I'll, it's more of a sharing of a perspective and I do it in kind of a, this is how I feel, but you do you, I've got me sort of thing. But it's, exactly. it's more like I speak on a, on a general, in general terms, because I don't necessarily know, depending on who I'm speaking with, what side they're on mm -hmm. and what they're attached to. If you if you get my meaning, yeah, absolutely, I get affiliation, beliefs, perspectives, whatever. And so, if I can just teach someone to let go of their attachment to whatever it is they believe in, and just kind of have it as more of a a personal perspective that that they believe is true, but that they're open to alternative perspectives. So, mm -hmm. if you present me with something different, something that isn't what I'm used to hearing or whatever, if I'm unattached, I'll be like okay, you know, that, that doesn't resonate with me, but I respect that that's where you are and that's what you feel. The, when you're unattached, you don't operate in kind of a defensive way. Right. It allows you to just be really respectful and compassionate to the other person, which is being the light. That's, that's you know, kind of uh, being um, the change that you want to see in the world, right? So if there's someone who's really afraid and, um, you know, they really don't know how to, how to work through things. It, it's kind of like, in some ways you have to let them be afraid if that's where they choose to be. But you can say, you know, it's okay for you, for you to feel fear. Just understand that when you're afraid, you're not helping anyone. Right. So if you can come at it from, from a perspective of, I'm going to do this because it's what I think is the right thing to do, but I'm not going to treat others in a way that is other than how I would prefer to be treated. Sure. Meaning, I'm not going to judge you for choosing something differently. I'm not going to emotionally manipulate you through, through shame, through um, right. ridicule, through blame, through, um, you know, all of that. Those are all manipulative, emotional sure. manipulation sure. tactics. I don't want somebody treating me that way. So I'm not going to treat you that way. Even if I disagree with you, <laughs> I'm not going to treat you that way. Right. Very, very was, beautiful. Be beautifully said. I, I want to say something to what you said. Please. What, what, what you said at the very beginning of this, this little point right here is very, mm -hmm. very poetic and elegant because very few people say this on my show. And as you know, advanced spiritually people today or aware beings really do struggle with wanting to wake people up. Right. And the, yeah. the, re the reality is, and, it, and we all find ourselves at that edge, right? Like a loved one or somebody, and you're just like, you just want to like grab them and be like, what do you not see? Right. But like the, yeah, but, but, but the best, a very good spiritual mentor of mine who will remain unnamed, who's no longer with us, rest, your, rest, rest in peace, Gerald. He would say people have a right to remain asleep for as long as it entertains them. And when he put it in that way for me, like six years ago, it was profound because it me, really made me realize, look, dude, and again, I was on my seeking path at that time and we're all evolving at our own rate and speed. But I was like, wow, that made me realize that like every soul is awakening or not. And it's their right to be that way. And it's not our right, me or you or anybody to basically, like you said, attempt to push them further along on their path. And so what you said was absolutely beautiful, but just a one other thing to you about that, I just gotta ask you, because I just did a video on this. You probably saw it, I put it on Twitter like three days ago, but Jen, the mind control that people are under right now is, mm -hmm. I mean, again, you know, dissonant or resonant, the resonant or not, you know, the resonant like you and I, we just laugh at it. We're just like, what, how do you not see it? But it's very strange to see so many people hypnotized, you know, and you probably see it a lot in Michigan. I see it in California because people are in abject fear, but you know, what, what do you say, you know, about those folks, not in judgment or not, you know, to, no. but I mean, how do you like, you know, what, when people ask you, well, so-and-so is, you know, they, they wear their masks in their car. You know, you know what I'm saying? So again, the fear, that, that, that fear vibration or that fear consciousness, like what do you say to help those people? It's their, I don't, because that's where they want to be. That is their choice. If right. they want to be in fear, that is their free will. And so for me, that's where it goes back to, I'm not going to push them. I'm not going to try to convince them other, otherwise. I might make a, I might say something kind of like in a, mm, I don't want to say like a passing joke, but, but there's a way that you can gently open people up to 
other possibilities and to take other things into consideration. Beautiful. But it really is all in a, in like being in a gentle delivery with, with no attachment to outcome of whether or not they kind of go, hmm, or not. Right. And that's where that non-attachment comes in. And then, you know, if you're, if you're in resistance, and so when you were talking about getting people to wake up, that's you being in resistance. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. That's because your then opinion. you're not, yeah, you've got to not be in resistance to just let people be them. Because even if they're, even if their truth is different from your truth. And so I want to be very clear that it's, if what they believe is, is true for them, let that be their truth. Right. Right. And let that even be though, okay. Even though it's probably that unlikely truth. that it's, because when people say their truth is not your truth, there's only universal truth. But as you said, like right. states of awareness you have to allow that, but you're right. And you're saying beautiful things, but I'm just going to play devil's yeah, advocate. And even, and yeah, and even perspective. yeah. Oh, go ahead. Sorry. No, go ahead. I was just going to say, I just want to play devil's advocate with you because you're beautiful in everything you're saying. And, but, and this is going to really help people, but what do you do for couples? Right. And this is maybe you and your practice when you're working with people, like when you have one person yeah. who's like you and me, Right. And then the other person is just in pure fear, fear, consciousness and dissonance. And the cup, you know, the, the spouse that's like you and me comes to you and says, Jen, help me. What do I do? I mean, because yeah. the answer is nothing, but you're living with that person. Yes. And, as you and, know, and it's, this is a really difficult struggle for many people across the world right now as consciousness is expanding. So I want to hear your answer on this. And it's, and, and I, I want to get to that, but I, I wanted to finish real quick the bit please, with, you know, approaching someone and, and not pushing and, and whatnot, but that gentle delivery helps, but really it's, it's so much about um, understanding that no matter where a person is, no matter what their perspective is, no matter what they're going through, they are exactly where they are supposed to be, exactly. regardless of whether or not you want them to be there. So that's the only thing I wanted to add. Is are that you reading my Twitter? Yes, but that's not where I'm getting from. <laughs> I said the same thing today on Twitter. It's so weird. Again, the energy I oh, said. Oh, actually, I didn't see that because I was busy. I'm exactly Twitter, but... as it's supposed to be. That's what yeah. my message was today. Yeah. So, but to, to your point about, you know, couples, there are two things to keep in mind. One is that this, this situation, this experience that we're in, where this level of duality and division is is being intentionally highlighted sure. and i mean that in, in it's a blessing even though it feels like a curse right and it's meant to be a curse absolutely really it's a blessing um is allowing uh the opportunity for the higher selves and the conscious selves of these people in the couples to really decide do we still really resonate yeah. can we still really love and accept each other just exactly as we are no matter our differences or not. So if the relationship lasts through it, then it was meant to. If it wasn't, if it doesn't, then it wasn't. Yeah. But it's a matter of trying to, if the person obviously wants the relationship to continue, it's teaching the person who's with the person who's uh, in fear, how to communicate with the person who's in fear in a compassionate way. Right. While right. also gently saying, you know, I. I love you and I understand that you're, you're terrified and I understand that you believe that these things are true and I'm not going to try to convince you or change your mind otherwise. I am being exposed to different information and the information I'm exposed to from the experts that I'm listening to say otherwise. And you're welcome to listen to my experts and make your own decision, but understand that I, I can't be where you are. Right. I can have compassion yeah. for you and, and love you, but I can't be where you are. And if you want to make me be where you are, this isn't going right. to work. That's beautiful, Jen. That's so beautiful how you said that. I mean, honestly, that's so beautiful. Good job. I'll give you a golf clap. No, I mean, no, but it, 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 it listen, it, it really is true. I mean, I, I, like I said, I put you in a hard spot. I wanted to see your answer. You, you, you truly are gifted in helping people. I, I can tell. I mean, I already know that. That's why we're talking, but it, it, I mean, come on, it's so important to, and I want to get into talking about angelics because I love angelics, right? I'm Jay Campbell 333. It's my, every time I look up, I see 333. I could tell you like how much that's happened in the last three or four months too, which, so I know they're around us. I know they're, yeah. they're out there. You just have to ask for their assistance and we'll get to that. But, you know, 
it's so important for people to recognize that you just have to, when you're not, you, and you said it, when you're not vibrating the same, when one person, as you said, is, and, and without judgment, the best way to say it is fear consciousness and resonance, right? So when you're in resonance and your, your spouse or your friend or whomever, a loved one is in dissonance, which is fear. The only thing you can do is what you just said is basically send them love vibrationally without getting into a debate. And you were so right in how you said it. It was so beautiful. But you cannot get into a back and forth because right. their experts and your experts are so separate, right? And realistically, yeah. this is where this really comes down to. And again, also hard to have a conversation, but people have to go within. Mm. You truly go beyond. And that in, inward internal practice which we're going to talk about anyway of meditation contemplation introspection grounding in nature you know all of those things if you don't work that part of the inner game mm -hmm. it doesn't matter you know what you talk about or what you think or how you feel because your vibration is not going to elevate until you get to that point of stillness of really turning off the drunk monkey and just mm -hmm. allowing yourself to just be you know immersed in the field, the source field, the energy and frequency yeah. of the universe, whatever you want to call it, meditation, yeah. mindfulness, yeah. whatever. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because when you're in that state, you can pull yourself out and see everything from a higher perspective, the divine's perspective, which is yeah. a non-judgmental exactly. perspective. It, yeah. isn't, it isn't a dualistic perspective. It's sure. the observation of the duality. Exactly. And that's where you can be in the world, see it, observe it, and not be of it, meaning you're, you're blinded by the right. illusion. Yeah, exactly. You know? Yeah, as I always say, come from a point of neutral observation and, and being in this world and of this world, you know, I've likened this, yeah. I've, I've likened this to say, the people who are right now in this world who are creating, right? You and I are creating this content. We're gonna push this into the ether. People are gonna watch it. Some people are gonna be like, wow. Some people are gonna be like, there are two, woo woo, right? Whatever yeah. they can be. But, yeah. The, the reality is, is like we're in creation. So we are consciously co-creating in the divine presence versus the people who are doing nothing but consuming. And then you're of this world, right? right. When you're yeah. just consuming, the dark forces have got you right where they want you. They got you in fear because you're every, you know, energetic transformation transfer that they're sending out which as you know is mostly fear consciousness oh, yes fear and, and separation absolutely yeah yeah beautiful beautiful okay um breath work in spiritual practice obviously we just talked a little bit about meditation i mean channeling i, I could go a million different directions with you i don't know i might have you come back on another podcast and just talk about that because I think a lot of people in the spiritual community are really afraid, not afraid, but they've heard so many weird statements. Oh, you gotta be careful of channelers, I'm right? Some of the, yeah. <laughs> some, listen, some of the best books that I have read in my life were channeled information. Mm -hmm. oh, so absolutely. I'm positive that the beings that are channeling, which obviously you can talk about this, some of the beings that you channel and that you're connected to are from a divine higher self perspective they're they're for the advancement of humanity they're for the advancement of consciousness there's no doubt about it and so it's like you know when when people come at me and they're like bro you can't have channelers on your show you can't trust channelers blah blah, blah whatever i always tell them um no in fact you just have to be a you know a clear channel yeah. you know what i'm saying like so anyway just but talk a little bit about um breath work so for me, breath work, whether it's meditation or channeling, and, and for me, meditation always leads to channeling. Like I can't, I have a hard time just sitting and doing the breath. Well, let me work. ask you it about that. Leads. Let me ask you about yeah, that. Yeah, go ahead. How did yeah, it happen ahead. to you? Because I'm always fascinated by this because I've never had anything like that. How much time have we got? Well, that's what I mean. It's a whole other podcast, but just okay. give me, just give me a two minute. I'll try to give you like a meat and tater summary. Oh. Uh, the meat and taters is going to be hard. All I can tell you is that um, it, it wasn't a, an evolving process because I didn't know what the hell was going on. I just knew something was going on. And when I figured out what was going on, it was like, oh, holy shit balls. Um, but I didn't, it was, but I didn't ask for it. Like I didn't try to learn how, like it just sort of, to my mind, it happened to me which of course I found out that I chose it before I incarnated, but it was, um, I had 
been receiving energy healing from, from a friend of mine. And I heard this voice in my left ear going, just relax. I'm like, okay. So I relaxed and wow. they shifted my breathing where I was no longer in control of my breathing. And this is actually not where the breath work comes in, but kind of. Well, how and long ago did was, this happen to you? How long ago was this? This was in 2010, I believe. Wow. Beautiful. And 2010, 2011. And uh, the breathing was, became really, really rapid. And I could feel my, my appendages tingling, which is, of course, you know, when you've got a, a buildup of, of sure. oxygen in your, in your yeah. blood. And I was like, this, I don't know where this is going or who this is, so I'm going to make it stop. And so over the next couple of years, I kept being guided to energy healers. And every time I would get a healing, I'd be put in that state to where I finally went, someone's trying to get me somewhere. That's Whoever said awesome. just relax is trying to get me somewhere. So I hired a friend of mine who was an energy healer. And I said, could you just could you just run energy until wherever this is supposed is trying to get me to go, we get there. Mm -hmm. So she did. And I did all the breathing and I saw this white light with this, my eyes were closed, but this white light came shooting up and out the top of my head and then it was done. And so from then on, every time I would meditate, I would go into that state. Beautiful. And then I realized through listening to Esther and Jerry Hicks, I, I, I'm assuming. Oh, absolutely. I subscribe every day to their emails. Yeah. So I was listening to one of their albums. They have a, they have a, an album. Um, and Esther, in the beginning, Esther and Jerry talk about how she came to channel Abraham and she was told to go home and meditate. And on the third go, she was being breathed. And Jerry said, Oh, it was like you were in ecstasy, which is very much that the type of breathing. And I was, that's when I was in the bathroom. I'll never forget. I was in the bathroom putting makeup on and I went, oh, oh, holy shit. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. My exact words. And so then naturally I called every, you know, psychic that I know and it wasn't enough. So I went to a psychic um, fair and they were like, yep, you're channeling this being. And I was like, that's still not enough. I can't wrap my brain around this. And so I called a guy who channels out of uh, Air, Scottsdale, Scottsdale, Arizona. And the being that he channels is like, yep, he's like an archangel. This is something you chose before you incarnated, blah, blah, blah. That's, That's as awesome. meat and taters as I can get that story. So. I, mean, I, I mean, I want to go a lot of different ways with that. I mean, as you know, I'm very into the angelic realms. I've read so much oh, about yeah. them. I know they're, I connect with them every single night of my life. When before I go to bed, I pray to them. I have invocations to them. I see 333. Right. You know, since my whole wall behind me, since I came back from Peru in July of last year, it shifted my, my being. As I, as I tell people, I was shifted molecularly, you know, and it was about consciousness and raising the vibration. It wasn't about, you know, who I was in my, you know, ego manifestation uh, person of a guy who was an author who wrote books on, you know, health optimization. It was now about, nope, I'm going to become the woo-woo guy that talks about raising your vibration and how the importance of that. But you know, ever since then, and really adopting that and embracing that moniker and, you know, really getting into the angelic frequencies. I mean, my whole life has shifted. Like I, it's weird, right? Because we're in this crazy 2020 year. And a lot of people are in fear consciousness, not doing as well, you know, have had financial ups and downs, whatever. 2020 has been a crazy year, but like, for me, it's been just pure abundance, but that's because my mindset is abundance. Yeah. I, I have to say, this is one of my, this is like, one of the happiest years I've ever had. Not to say I haven't had, you know, challenges, but this is my happiest year, by the way. I this is just like I don't know. I feel so good about everything that's going on outside of me and you know ar around me personally, sure. which is weird considering you know if you were to turn on the news or talk to somebody at the grocery store, whole different right. ball game. And here's me. Doo -doo -doo, la -la -la -la. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but it's but it's what you said. It's well, you and I and a lot of people like us um, are in this world consciously co-creating. Yeah, and we're not of this world watching Netflix, complaining right. or CNN or Fox or whatever mainstream fear conscious narrative Brain that is shoved down your throat. Hey guys, what's going on? It's Jay Campbell. Quick commercial for the optimized tribe with US Navy SEAL Michael Jaco and I every Monday night at 6 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. There is not a single group online where you will get the highest level intel that Michael and I can provide you from mastering intuition to fully optimizing your hormonal health 
to improving your fitness, to raising your vibration and increasing your consciousness. There isn't a single group online with two dudes like Michael and myself helping people become the best version of their self. It's literally $99 a month and you get a 90 minute call with me and Michael every single Monday night. Don't wait another second. Sign up now at the link, theoptimizedtribe.com. I appreciate you guys and I send you tremendous love and light. It's crazy. I mean, that's so awesome though. All right, so I, I am gonna bring you back on. We're gonna talk about channel because cool. I really, really wanna go deep on that. But the, the, the one of your points, which I love, is fear and trauma and soul, you know, based no. lack. So all of that is a lot, as you said, very eloquently, which I'm going to write about in my book coming, which is called Raising Your Vibration, go figure, um, is, is literally just lack of self-love. It's, it's, it's a lack of trust of self and a lack of self-love. And again, my, I'm very blessed. My wife has been my greatest spiritual mentor. She taught me when we first met back in 2012, there's only two purposes that a human being is even here, and that's to give and to receive love. And you know this, Jen, from your work, so many people do not feel love, and it really starts at base essence. It's not, you don't love who you are as a being, and that comes from trauma, right? Past life trauma, current life trauma, lack of respect, you know, being beaten up, being sexually molested, being raped, being beaten up, whatever it is that happened to you in this physical incarnated form, Yep. that you've not overcome. And I think, and I want you to go deep on this, but I think that majority of people today, right now, who are down here, mm -hmm. have just a trauma or multiple traumas that they have not a, been able to face and accept and allow and, and, and just admit to. And then obviously they have no integration of it because if you don't accept it and allow it, you can't integrate it. Do you, do you think that that's kind of where we are right now with this collective dark night of the soul of the planet? Yeah, I think a lot of it is rising to the surface because we're being made to face some of our greatest fears. Totally. totally. Um, and, and face um, a lot of extra, like, opposition. Yeah. You know what I mean? Re and resistance, which yeah. kind of resembles some of the traumas that people have experienced. Even, right. you know, the ridicule and the shaming and, and whatnot, that's bullying. Yeah. And so it kind of brings all, pokes those wounds a lot. And it pokes the wounds too of, um, you know, if, if you've seen people on, online where if you disagree with their perspective, they get pissed at you and blow up, right? And that's okay. But what they're saying is that it, they're saying, I'm attached to my perspective. I identify with it. I see it as being who I am. And so you disagreeing with me tells me that you're disagreeing with who I am. Right. But you only identify with your stuff like that when there's an aspect of you that doesn't love yourself enough to, to not need to attach to those things. It doesn't mean don't have a perspective or don't have a belief. It just means don't, don't identify as that. Yeah. And you only identify as these things if you've got, you know, some unresolved lack of self-love. But yeah, I think we're seeing a lot of that stuff come to the surface and people are either going to face it and allow themselves to work through it, cry, get angry, recognize it, see it for what it is. Because, you know, when you go through shadow work, it's not about, it's not about making it go away. It's about looking at the aspect of you that was there when it got traumatized, right. whatever it is, and loving that part of exactly. you and like giving that part of you like a hug and whatever it was that part of you needed in that moment, giving that to yourself right. and, and then having a good emotional outburst, whatever it is, mm -hmm. anger, yeah. pain, whatever, giving that to yourself. And then you integrate it. That's what the healing is. That's where you can heal that trauma. It's not making it go away and da, 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 I don't have a problem anymore. It's, but now I can love that part of myself. I know that it's there, but I can love it. That's beautiful. So you're either going to take this opportunity and do that, or you're going to continue to run from it. And right. either way, the choice is yours. Well, what, that's beautiful, by the way. Well, but what you're really saying is, is that acceptance and allowance of it drops the judgment. And as yes. soon as you accept an allowance, it just goes by, its, goes by the wayside anyway, naturally, because like you don't have an attachment or a fixation yes. that it's a negative occurrence or it was a collapse or a debacle or whatever you've negatively labeled it from your yes. past. 
And, and, and it's so true. I mean, once you accept and allow things mm -hmm. into your life, wherever they are, and as you said earlier in the show, you, you then instantly become from a place of neutral observation. Yes. They just fall by the wayside because you're not attached to them consciously. And, you know, one yes. of the great books that I read, um, The Three Principles of Creation from the Soul Group Omni, which is channeled information, you know, they talked about the reality of transpersonal trauma which is again, the, the trauma that's transferred DNA and the imprint from the mom and the dad to the daughter or the son. And then it just continually viciously yep. cycled over until yep. people accept and allow that they have trauma and yes. that they're willing to integrate. And then, you know, work with someone like you who that's what you do, right? You integrate these yep. soul traumas, but dude, honestly, like, it, I don't know anything more important on this planet right now than if we could have more people aware of people like you who yeah. actually can help because so many people write me and they're like, you know, Jay, you know, you've really helped me start looking at things from a conscious perspective and looking at reality, you know, from the opposite of what we've been taught and led to believe. And it's like, yeah. I don't know what to do. I'm traumatized, but where do I go? I can't go to a psychiatrist. I can't go to a medical doctor. You know, I don't even know what a alternative healer you know, a holistic healer. I don't know any of that stuff. I mean, I'm watching your show and you're telling me and you're helping train and give me information, but like, what do I do? And I always say this, Jen, I say like, I would love to start a giant, like collective holistic uh, index, right? Like mm -hmm. web-based that I could literally find people who are traumatized healers that they could literally make a Zoom appointment or a, you know, a virtual video appointment and- yeah. Because I mean, I know in my life, I've done four age regression hypnosis therapy sessions, right? And yeah. two of them massively removed personal internal traumas that I was suffering from. And the other two just like opened my mind up and my, it was probably my heart more than my mind mm -hmm. to just what lays beyond or what was beyond that I had chosen to forget. And it's like so many people don't have a direction to go to because they're turned off. They think that it's woo woo and it's not real and they're not going to get help. But I mean, can you talk a little bit about that of like how important it is to integrate your trauma? Oh, it's, it's extremely important. And I think, you know, you kind of touched on it because we were talking about the non-attachment and that's the not, I not I, learning to not identify with it. It was an experience, but it isn't who you are. Exactly. And when you can get there, through, you know, looking at it, you've got to really be willing to dive down deep into the dark, murky waters of your trauma right. and swim there for a while and really go back to that time and, and allow yourself to have that emotional processing. And once you kind of come out the other side of that, that's when you can say, that was an experience. It's not who I am. Right. It's something that happened to me. And I think, you know, to me, I think it, it's amazing to be able to uh, tackle an, a, a challenge through multiple modalities. So I say, go see a counselor, go see a therapist. They can help you cognitively. They can help you mentally. They can even help you emotionally. Then you can see, you know, energetic healers and channelers and they can help you energetically. They can help you see things from a perspective that um, counselors and therapists just aren't always able to see. Not to say there aren't intuitive counselors and therapists because there are, right, but right. you know we can shine lights on things that that they just aren't aware of and that maybe you had forgotten about. So I, you know, then there's aromatherapy, there's massage therapy, which you know gets to the emotions and the energy that you're holding onto from those traumas in your physical structure. So right, right. I vote mode you know multi-modality that to me is is the best approach but it it's you just gotta you just have to do it so you can either choose to continue to say you're a victim of your trauma and that is who you are or you can say i want to let this shit go because there's so much more to my life that i would like to experience once this isn't so much in my face anymore you just have, but that's, that's the choice you have to make of either facing it and knowing that it's, it's not going to be easy, but once you're on the other side, it's infinitely better than where you've been. Beautiful. I could talk to you forever. I can't even imagine like how many lives you and I've lived together or fought side by side in past lives. Cause like, <laughs> yeah. 
I mean, you quiet me, you know, you, you have a very calming presence energetically, which is amazing. I, I mean, I think what I'm going to do is probably like book a session with you or have my wife and I, do you do combined couple sessions ever, every now and then? Or you only do one on one? Um, I've only done, I've only done one and it was interesting, but, uh, but usually it's one on one, but yeah. I mean. Well, no, I mean, I'll do one on one. I just, I've never had, Monica and I have never had anybody do us together. I mean, we've had so many. Oh you know, individuals. Sure. So, I mean, I, if you, if you're willing to do that, but anyway, I, I have to ask you, I'm not, we're not done yet, Jen. We're 42 minutes okay. in and this is really good. So <laughs> we're gonna keep, as long as you're okay to keep going, are you cool to keep going? Oh, sure. Go ahead. Okay. So I want to read what you have because it's so well put. Um, oh. And then I want to ask you, we're going to end the show about the angels because it's a Jay Campbell podcast and we have to talk about the angels. So those energies, this is what you wrote, and I'm just going to read it to the audience because it's beautiful. Those energies and entities who agreed to play the roles of the opposite of love, light, and service to others do not want you to know and embody the understanding that as an individual of source, you are an all-powerful being of divine white light, and nothing and no one has power over you save that which you allow. So that's beautiful. And I want to explain that and break it down and let, let you just go deep is that, and this is the truth. And it takes a very advanced conscious person to drop the attachment that this is not true. And that's why I say it's so beautifully written, but everyone is playing a role. Mm -hmm. Like even the dark forces mm -hmm. you know, who molested you. You know, I like, you know, Maureen St. Germain, you know, she uses the term those oh. who would hold us back. Right. So anything that you've labeled as dark energy, satanic, luciferic, you know, demiurgic, you know, uh, magenta pixie calls them the dark brothers, whatever. Like the, yeah. the, rea the reality is, is that they are all playing a role. This is yeah. all about soul evolution and growth. And so yeah. like, if you start looking at it as that and not like they're the enemy and labeling them as the enemy and so attached to the fight against the dark side. And I'm always having these conversations, right. I'm always having these conversations with people in my inner circles about like, just dude, they're just playing a role because mm -hmm. everything is about soul evolution and growth. And so it's like, just again, back to the place of neutral observation. Yeah. Hmm, this is interesting. How can I learn from this? Yeah. And so like when you get to that point as a, as a soul, you know, empowered sovereign being, and you use that too. Um, yeah. I, I have to give that to Magenta Pixie, though. <laughs> well, no, but I mean, like, I think all of us use that. And, that, and, that, and that's so important, again, to know that you have to come from a place of empowered, sovereign, and free versus victim, you know, attached to negative outcomes and fear, right? Because, I mean, everything well, I is fear. Say, I will say they had me channel that I'm a sovereign being the week she first said that that was a thing that we needed to do. And it was weird because... It was in a dream. I saw it on TV. I, I dreamt about it, channeled it, saw it on TV, all in a day. This is all in one day. And then that same week, she was like, you, you know, you need to announce your sovereignty. And it was just like, That's that awesome. is so cool. So, yeah. but she's, she's made it a much more, she's been able to bring that message out to like everyone. Which is I, like, I have amazing. a story that I will tell you about me and Magenta, but it's not for on the podcast. It's really amazing. Okay. Like, it's kind of okay. like. No she's way. cool. I just dig her. I dig no, her. No, she's amazing. Lot. She's and absolutely amazing. No, I have nothing. Yeah. It, it's the highest positive thing. It's like, oh, actually, yeah. like, it blew up my soul, like, when we had this conversation, but I'll tell you af off air. But anyway, okay, okay so right. I want to yeah. I want to finish on this, obviously. So yeah. Yeah. The, the importance of just allowing the bad that you label bad, right? Because nothing is bad. It's a learning experience. Yeah. But yeah, allowing opposite. as you define it as bad or negative when it happens, because let's face it, it might cause pain, right? But all growth yeah. comes from pain. But I want your, yeah. you know, your thoughts on just being okay with a thing that you initially label as pain or negative and not allowing it to control your life, right? Because so many people have that one bad thing, a divorce, a kid that dies, whatever. And yeah. Jen, then they're just energetically and spiritually castrated. Tons and they, of, yeah. they can't Tons overcome it. it. Yeah. And that's, you know, that's the choice they've made to, to attach themselves to that experience. And to, you know, you know that saying, um, oh, uh, you, you know, you can't drink poison, but expect the other person to die. Right. 
it's that same concept where yeah. if you're holding on to that and you're you know maintaining that attachment right you're only hurting yourself exactly so when you can let go of your judgment as that experience of being bad because you asked for it yep and i mean that like before you incarnated you said hey i'm going to play this role can you play that role can you be the husband that that you know divorces me so that i can learn right. to forgive you to move on from the experience you know to love myself enough to not take personally whatever it is you did to me you know whatever it is yeah. it's a learning opportunity but but yeah it, the the not judging something and understanding that and this is the the mind bending bit that people tend to forget all the roles the the jerk ex-husband the dark negative entities there's only one energy playing all the roles right so when you can remember that one energy, one creative source decided to, to create this, you know, a, a holographic reality of, right. of, you know, duality, and thus is playing all the roles, including playing the role of my water bottle, and literally all of the energy that, that we're seeing and experiencing is all that creative source energy, that, all that consciousness. So when you can go, that demonic entity that attacked me in my sleep last night, that's still an aspect of God. And so that's still an aspect of love Beautiful. and also an aspect of me. So instead of taking it personally and resisting it and getting pissed at it or my ex-husband or my, you know, whatever it is or an experience that I had and allow myself to emotionally process, but then also have a, uh, that, that neutral observation of, but that's just me doing something to me that I agreed to have done anyway. So why should I act like I'm a victim? Right. Because I'm not. You know what yeah. I mean? No. I mean, again, it's all beautiful. This has been an amazing podcast. I mean, people just love to play the victim role. It's a lot easier, Jen, to just not take ownership. It's just, it it's so easy to be a person today in technology, social media, Instagram, Facebook, to not be empowered and sovereign and free and, and, and to be personally accountable. And I have this problem with my daughter, you know, I'm blessed that I have three beautiful daughters. One just went off to college. The other two are about to turn 13 and 11. They're 12 and 10, but the 10 year old, 10 year old's birthday is in nine days, 13 days, excuse me. No, 14, 11 days, 12 days, right? <laughs> 15th, 15th. Sorry. I can't, I'm looking at my calendar. And then my other one is in a January, but they're all, the, both of them are beautiful girls, but one is in victim consciousness and the other one is completely personally accountable. And they've been raised the same way. There's not, there's yeah. no differentiation. Again, it's a soul evolution standpoint yes. and each soul is evolving at its own rate and speed. And for my wife and I, it's like, we have to be always, and it's not easy as you know, coming from the place of neutral observation, especially when you have one who's so empowered and the other one is like, so it's not my fault, man. So, you know, but, but, but it's not easy to choose no. to be accountable, Jen. No, that's, that's choosing the challenging. Absolutely. That's choosing the challenging road, but the challenging road is the road that, that gets you to um, that level of self-awareness right. that you wouldn't otherwise have. Exactly. exactly. You know, you have to be, when you can get to the, to the point where you can observe yourself being pissed and yeah. go, yeah, I'm, I'm pissed and I know I'm pissed, but I'm going to let myself be pissed. I know why I'm pissed. And I understand that the reason that I'm pissed is, is because I've, I've placed this, this judgment, but I'm going to, I'm going to get through it. And then, and then you're over it. So it's not like, it's not like you stop having these thoughts and feelings. Yeah. You just observe yourself doing it yeah. and then you can talk yourself through it and you get over it. And it's, you know, and that's not true for some of the heavier duty things, but you know, like you were talking about the, your daughter kind of, it's not my fault. Those are the sorts of things where, where if you can get to the point where you can say, I realize that I don't want to take ownership of this thing. Why don't I want to take ownership of this? Why would admitting that this is something I'm, re I'm responsible for so bad? Where is this resistance coming from? What is this wound? When you can start asking yourself those questions, that is when you're opening the doors to seeing where you've been wounded. And when you can see where you've been wounded, you can see where you need to give yourself love. When you see where you need to give yourself love, that's when you can integrate those wounds and those traumas. Does that make sense? Can I say that?
Everything you said makes sense. It's beautiful. I, I do want to get one final comment from you on the angels. And then we'll end the show with you telling people how they can work with you and stuff like that. This has been an amazing podcast. Um, obviously, I'm all about the angels. Um, I've Robert Stanley and I started researching what we call the angel avalanche at the very beginning of this year. I mean, I've always been conscious of them, but I really started spending energy and time and reading and researching about them. And there's so much information about angelic beings that has been suppressed. I wonder why. Um, it's out there if, if, if people, you know, want to really go down that path. But I, you know, I just want to get your final thoughts on like how accessible angels and archangels are. I mean, we all have guardian angels. Some of us have three, five, six, depending on where you're at and your soul maturation, they're always around, but like yeah. give us some tips, very, you know, um, proactive tips on how to engage the angels and how you can, you know, ac access their beautiful and divine um, symphony that they're always around create a relationship because they, they can't um they can't usurp our free will right so they're sitting around figuratively speaking twiddling their proverbial energetic they're playing the harp yeah you know picking their proverbial angelic noses waiting for us to engage with them they they can't do anything until we ask they're handcuffed and bound and gagged until we ask. And so I would say first, just engage with them, just acknowledge their friggin' existence. And, and yeah. I like to refer to my uh, group as my spiritual entourage. And so when I call them my spiritual entourage, I'm including you know, my, my family members and my ancestors, my totems, my spirit guides, my Elohim, the, you know, my yeah. guardian angels, whatever. All of the yeah. beings that agreed to guide and support me in this lifetime from all realms, dimensions, and star systems, right? So I call my spiritual entourage. And when you can start a relationship just by you starting to engage mental, you know, or, or out loud, I talk to them out loud all the time. Right, yeah, of course. Uh, conversation, and they go, holy crap, we're being acknowledged. Okay, okay, guys, you know, we're on deck. And, and then you can say, let me know, let me know that you're around. And then don't place any expectations or conditions right. of- Full surrender, full surrender. Yeah, exactly. Like, cause a lot of them are like, well, I want to hear their voices and I want to see a flash of light. Right, right. No. Good, good friggin' luck because they're going to be like, because you're expecting that, that's the last thing we're going to choose to do because they want to teach you to learn to let go of those conditions of, or, and expectations and let them come to you in the way that they know because they know you better than you know you let them come to you in the way that they know they can communicate with you best whether it's through a song a dream a loved one frick the tv even you'll get up you'll see like oh, yeah. repetitive messages um a fe that feeling of like warmth tinglies i get yeah. like warm tinglies i get hair um, stand up on my right arm oh and god yeah head. absolutely in, in like the head. best warm fuzzy kind of way yeah. there are so many ways that they can communicate with you but if you say it has to be in a certain way you're you're putting limitations on yeah. divine source and, and angelic beings and, and it's you're doing yourself a disservice but just reach out to them and, and start engaging and asking for communication I would also suggest that when you start asking for help and guidance and support and, you know, stuff, for me, I feel like my conscious self doesn't have the purview that they have, right? They can see all these other potentials and possibilities that I have no concept of. Right. So when I start saying, I want this thing and I want it to look like this, feel like this, it has to be within this time frame. Never. No, I just shackled them, bound them and gagged them. And, and I've kind of screwed myself potentially yeah. out of something way more awesome that I could ever possibly come up with. So yeah. be more, I like to approach it more of, you know, I'm so grateful for all of your guidance and support exactly. and your love. And I'm, I ask that you please continue to guide me and support me in whatever ways you feel are for my highest and best good. Beautiful. Amazing. I mean, I'm going to read what I say every night before I go to bed. This is yeah, my- please. It's my guardian angel prayer. Actually, no, that's, I'm sorry. That's my, well, that's that too. But I, I just want to, this is my before bedtime invocations. Dear God, angels and guides, I request to attend the most evolved place I may move to with my consciousness for the purpose of clarity about my mission, my purpose and service. Let me learn and understand better what I need to achieve my fullest potential. Please assist me in any upgrades that may be possible and, I, and offer me your highest level of divine protection. So again, I'm open and 
accepting and allowing whatever, you know, I, I, whenever I get down in the day or I get a little negative or whatever, I just literally will pull back and I'll just be like, please, you know, and I, and you're right. I say it out loud sometimes too, but I'll just say, please just push me in the direction that I can best serve. Mm -hmm. That's what I do. Yeah. Oh yeah. And, and that, there's no expectations. Nope. And that, that, the, you know, the thing that you read out that you say before you go to bed is perfect because you're asking for, for what you want, which you have to do, or they can't do it. Exactly. But you're not saying, and it's got to look like this. D d d d d d yeah. No. Exactly. No. And you know, you were, you brought up earlier that, um, I just want to, this, I feel like I have to say this, so please forgive me because I know we're going please. a little bit over, but the bit about, you know, sovereign being, you have no power over me. For any people, for any of your, your viewers and your listeners who ever feel like they uh, have negative and lower energies or entities around them in their home, uh, whether they're being attacked in their dream or, you know, at, at night, um, I would say memorize, I am an all powerful being of divine white light. And nothing and no one has power over me save that which I allow. I am a sovereign being. You have no power over me. And in the name of my divine aspect, Jesus Christ, Yeshua, Archangel Mikael and his legion of angels, and the power and the order of Melchizedek, I command you to leave this space and all of my energetic levels throughout all directions of time and space to go to the white light of source for trans transmutation. That's awesome. If you can memorize that. That's so awesome that you memorized that because now I'm going to, you got to, you, gotta, you, gotta, you, need, you need to send me that. You need to send me that written down so I can put it in the link to this. And Jennifer, this has been amazing. Like I knew when I asked you to come on my podcast, that it was going to be phenomenal, but I didn't have this expectation. And again, as I told you off air, beings of light of resonant frequencies are all aligning right now in our own ways and means without even knowing that, I mean, we kind of, as a soul level, know everything, right? Because we've chosen to forget in this veil of the matrix. But it's amazing and beautiful at the same time that you and I were able to come together and harmonize like we did tonight. And I know that this podcast is going to give a lot of people not just help, but hope. Oh, because I hope so. I hope so. And no, I, don't I hope. So. Don't hope. Know it. Because I already listened to you. Oh. And I felt your energy and your frequency. And it was absolutely amazing. And I'm just blessed to have you on. If someone wants to work with you right now, and you know go to your website or connect with you online what is the best way they can they can book a session with you yeah they can either go to my website which is www.angelenergyhealing.net uh they can find me on facebook under jennifer passivant intuitive spiritual life coach energy healing practitioner and channeler they can find me in, on twitter instagram under angel energy 44 because angel number 44 there you go right? um, yep. uh and, and they can email me when, if they go to my Facebook or my, excuse me, if they go to my uh, website, I have my phone number and my email address so they can just reach out to me. Um, and, you know, I have my services and descriptions of what I do, but, you know, they can always feel free to contact me. Oh, well, you're going to get a bunch of business. I, off just this say, I can assure you. <laughs> I just have to thank you though for contacting me. And I was blown away. I was like, oh, holy shit. <laughs> Well, don't, Honestly, I mean, I'm so grateful for this. And I just, I have to make sure I, I tell you that because it, it, it really means a lot that you would have me on here and that I can maybe help more people through this exposure because it is my intention to serve humanity. And so I'm just so grateful. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I mean, I don't really have anything to say about that. You know, one of my gifts is connecting with other like-minded, amazing people who also want to serve. So it's my honor and I'm humbly privileged that you were here with me today and we made literally amazing. I mean, this is to me like one of the highest vibrational podcasts I've done. And truthfully, I've done a lot of podcasts in the last month with people like yourself who are extremely of the highest vibration, the highest resonant chord. And you and I made an amazing symphony tonight. So let me just say to all the amazing people that watch the Jay Campbell podcast, please support the fine, incredible people such as Jennifer Passavant, who has come on here tonight. Go to her website, angel, angelenergyhealing.net. I love that, by the way. Or go and check her out on Twitter or Instagram. She's all over there. Um, it's been an honor, honestly, again, to, to communicate with you. And let me just say, remember, raise your vibration to optimize your love creation. We will see you guys very soon.